Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our Calculus 2 series on integration, so we're gonna go ahead and do integration by parts. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Here we have the question, what's the integral version of product rule? So, of course, we're gonna go ahead and derive it. So suppose we have two functions, both in terms of x. So we have u of x and v of x. What we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and use product rule. So here I have u times v, and we're gonna go ahead and take the derivative of this whole thing. So using product rule, we get the derivative of the first. So I'm actually gonna write that as du dx times the second plus the first. So we get u times the derivative of the second dv dx. So we took the derivative of both sides. Our next step is, of course, we're working with integration, so we're gonna integrate both sides. So we took product rule and we're gonna go ahead and kind of like undo it. Okay, so there I set up the integral of both sides. So notice when we take the integral of a derivative, they just cancel each other out. So on this left side, we get u times v, and this is equal to, and let's go ahead and separate these two by the plus. So we have the integral, and I'll write v times du over dx, multiplied by dx plus the integral, and that's u times dv over dx times dx. So notice here what cancels out. The dx's cancel out, that's super nice. So I'll go ahead and rewrite this. We get u times v is equal to the integral of v du plus the integral of u dv. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is now subtract over this first integral. So we get u times v minus the integral of v du is equal to the integral of u dv. And that right there is integration by parts. So let's go ahead and look at the formula. We have that suppose u and v are differentiable functions in terms of x, then the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus v du. So let's go ahead and see this in action because it looks very abstract. So here we have the integral of x times e to the x dx. And we can see that there's a product going on which is why we derived integration by parts from product rule. So let's go ahead and work this out. We are gonna set something equal to u, and then we are gonna set the remainders equal to dv. And here you're gonna go ahead and see why. So u is something that we're gonna take the derivative of. We get du dx is equal to something. Typically what we want is something that's kinda of gonna go away, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and take x. And the reason I say go away is because you'll see when we take the derivative of x, it's just equal to one. And so here, if I multiply dx over, we get du is equal to dx. And so in that sense, the x went away. Of course, we took the derivative of it, but you want something that when you take the derivative of it, it will go to a constant. Now, here's the thing. We only use one part of our integral. And now look what we have remaining. We have e to the x dx, which is why we set it equal to dv. So here we have dv is equal to e to the x dx. It's not v because we still have that dx term re remaining. And so what we do here actually is we integrate both sides. So on this left side, we're integrating a constant of one in terms of v. And so this gives us our v value. v is equal to the antiderivative of e to the x. And here we're going to leave that as e to the x. We're not going to add on c. You'll see why we'll add on a constant of integration later. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and follow our formula. So we get uv, which here, if you wanna look at it visually, we cross multiply, so we get x times e to the x, and we subtract the integral of v du. So visually, we cross over then and multiply those together. So we get e to the x times dx. And sorry, that would have gone to that one right there. Another way that I remember it is um, uv rays shooting at voodoo, um, uv minus integral of v du. That's what I do, but let's go ahead and integrate. So we can see how this worked out nicely is now we're left with an integral that we can actually take the antiderivative of. And so here we get minus e to the x, and this is where we add on some constant c. You just work it all the way down and then you add on c, right? And that right there is our final solution. So the point of integration by parts is to make it something that we can actually integrate. We cannot necessarily integrate x e to the x just straight through, which is why this method was invented or discovered. So let's go ahead and try some problems here. We have x squared sine of x dx. So like I said, you wanna set u equal to something that will go away or differentiate down to a constant. So I'm not gonna do sine of x because then you're just gonna be going in the sine cosine circle forever, right? So instead, I'm gonna go ahead and set u equal to x squared. So now I can take the derivative of both sides and I get two x dx. Now I know what my dv is equal to. The dv is left over to the remainder. So we get sine of x dx. Here we can take the antiderivative of both sides. So we get v is equal to, and that becomes negative cosine of x, no dx. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and set what this is equal to. So I'm gonna do, you can either do the diagonal. So UV rays, X squared times negative cosine of X shooting at voodoo, V negative cosine of X times du, 2x dx. So let's go and rewrite that a little bit. We got lots of negatives going on. We get negative x squared cosine of x, and that'll actually become a plus 2x cosine of x dx. It is okay to do integration by parts multiple times, which is the purpose of this problem. So again, we are gonna go ahead and set u equal to the thing that will differentiate away. And so I'm gonna set it equal to 2x because we get du is equal to 2 dx, very nice dv is going to be our leftover so we get cosine of x dx and we're going to go ahead and integrate both sides in order to solve for v v is going to be equal to sine of x not dx i don't know why i keep wanting to say that but here i'm going to go ahead and do our thing so first we have negative x squared cosine of x right that did not change at all and now we have uv uv raised so 2x times sine of x shooting at voodoo so that becomes 2 sine of x dx. And that is something that we can take the integral of nicely, right? Which is the purpose, like we said. So we get negative x squared cosine of x. Those did not change at all. We have already integrated those. Very, very nice. Minus, and that becomes 2 cosine of x. And that is negative. So that becomes a positive plus some constant c. And there we have our final solution. So we can do integration by parts multiple times, right? It just is going to depend on that power of x. Like if you had x cubed, you'd have to do it three times. Okay, so natural log of x, this is actually a very popular one, and it is a definition. So let's go ahead and do integration by parts actually for this one. We are going to find what u is equal to, and we're also going to find what dv is equal to. If we set natural log of x equal to dv, it would be a bit pointless because you'd be integrating both sides and we still don't know what the integral is equal to. But we do know how to take the derivative of it. So I'm going to set u equal to the natural log of x. I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So I get du is equal to 1 over x dx. So what does that mean my dv is equal to? Well, there's only one leftover and that's just dx. So now when we integrate both sides, we get v is equal to x. It's like we're integrating a constant of 1 on both sides. So let's go ahead and do this thing. We're going to cross over UV rays. I'm sorry if you hate that. <laughs> Shooting at voodoo. So that becomes X times one over X DX. I'm going to drop it down right here. We get X times the natural log of X minus, and notice that just becomes the integral of one. That's why we set U equal to the natural log of X, which seems a little counterintuitive, but it works out nicely x plus c because this right here is kind of the definition of the integral of natural log of x and that's a good trick to have in your back pocket because especially if you're on an exam you might not necessarily want to whip out integration by parts just to save time because if it's a timed exams you know we know how it goes so that's a good thing to remember now we can also do integration by parts with definite integrals and it's going to work out i think how you would think it would work out so let's go ahead and work through this this is very similar to the natural log of x in which we're going to set u equal to whatever's on the inside. We only have one function here, so it looks a little counterintuitive, but I promise it will work out. And so that leaves dv to just be equal to dx. So here, let's go ahead and differentiate both sides. We get du is equal to the derivative of inverse sine, which is 1 minus x squared dx. And then v, when we integrate both sides, is just going to be equal to a nice x. So here, let's go ahead and do it without the um, definite integral part. Let's just set it up. We have uv rays, so sine inverse sine of x times x minus voodoo. So we get the integral of x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. What do we do when we have bounds? Well, whatever we took out, the uv, that's just going to be evaluated between the bounds. So 1 half and the square root of 3 divided by 2. And then our integral for the minus voodoo, it just this stays exactly the same, right? So that's the only difference is now we're just evaluating it between an upper and a lower bound. So let's go ahead and evaluate this part first. Some people like to wait to the end to evaluate the whole thing. Some people like to do it in parts. It's just going to be whatever your heart desires. It doesn't make a difference if you evaluate this part now and the second part later, or you do it all together at the end. So let's go ahead and do upper minus lower. So we're going to get the square root of 3 divided by 2 times inverse sine at square root of 3 over 2 minus one half and inverse sine at one half. So I, I'm terrible. I can't 
remember these for the life of me. So I always draw the triangle. I guess I'll show you how I do it. So this tells us that sine of some angle theta is going to be equal to the square root of three over two. So here's going to be my theta. I know sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and that means the remaining leg must be one. So I always remember the bigger angle is across from the bigger side. So this one has to be pi over three, opposite of square root of three. And then this other one has to be pi over six because it's opposite of one. So that's how I remember it. And this is gonna tell us that our theta is equal to a pi over three. So here we can plug that in. We get the square root of three divided by two times pi over three minus one half. And now I know that one half is gonna be the opposite angle, which is gonna be pi over six, right? So times pi over six. We can go ahead and simplify that, I guess. I don't know, pi times the square root of three divided by six minus pi divided by 12. You can keep simplifying it if you want to like combine it into one fraction. I'm lazy, so I'm not gonna do that. But we went ahead and solved the first part of that. Now we wanna go ahead and solve the second part, right? So for this one, actually, we're going to use u substitution. So we're using u substitution within integration by parts. So I'm going to go ahead and set u equal to 1 minus x squared. And if you're not sure why I did that, we will go ahead and see. We get negative 2x dx. So here we can go ahead and solve for dx. u divided by negative 2x equals dx. Okay, so don't forget, we also have to change the bounds. So here we have our upper bound is equal to the square root of three divided by two, and we know what u is equal to, so we can go ahead and plug that in. Squared, so that is equal to one minus three divided by four, and that is equal to a positive one fourth. So that's our new upper bound. Now we're gonna go ahead and find our new lower bound. So our lower bound is equal to one half, u is equal to one minus one half squared, so that becomes one minus one fourth, which is equal to three fourths. So let's go ahead and plug in what we know. We already found that first integral, what it was evaluated at. Okay, so now we can plug in what our new lower bound was. So that was 3 fourths. Our upper bound was 1 fourth. And now we didn't change anything to the x in the numerator, but we set inside the radical equal to u. And we found dx was equal to du divided by negative 2x. So let's see what cancels out. This x cancels with that one. Do not forget that negative one half and we can bring that out because it's a scalar multiple. So here we have pi times the square root of three divided by six minus pi divided by 12. Now those negatives cancel out and that becomes a one half, three fourths to one fourth. And that's one over the square root of u and you can rewrite that as u to the negative one half if you really wanna go ahead and see power rule. So let's go ahead and do this thing. We add one to the exponent, divide by that new exponent, and that's actually gonna work out really nicely because those one halves are gonna cancel out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that right now, right? And here we can go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. So that becomes one half minus square root of three divided by two. And I mean, you can, you know, simplify it more. I'm not gonna, cause once again, I'm lazy. But that is all I have for us today on integration by parts. If you enjoyed this video, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.